you know, here, here's the thing. It's crazy, but it's like, I love it, right? But like, why is it gotta be just, it's like the one thing. It's like, how could Canon not understand that? <sighs> Today we're talking about the R6. What's up everybody, Jared with an I here. Welcome back to the channel. Gosh, this week, nay, this month, has just been a whirlwind of just craziness. Somehow I had three weddings in the span of seven days. I traveled over like 400 miles. My GH5 and small HD got damaged at the most recent wedding I did. And to top it all off, my Canon R6, the holy grail, one of my favorite cameras, finally did the thing that we don't talk about on the channel here. It did that thing. I'm not gonna say it, but it did it. Okay, yes, it finally popped up with the overheating symbol. The one thing that I didn't want to see this camera do, honestly, I was just waiting for the day. You know, you see the videos, you see all the articles, you're just like, ah, oh, you know, that can't happen to me. Yeah. So you guys know, I really do love the Canon R6. I've preached about it in multiple videos on this channel. I do believe that it is one of the best hybrid Canon models for both photography and videography. And you know, it really is a solid option. This video is just really intended for entertainment purposes, but also educational to just give you my experience with it and uh, let you make the best decision for you. So let's dive into number one, one of the biggest cons of this camera and that is no backup recording. One of the biggest and most sought after feature in any new camera for me, I don't know about for you, but for me, is having the ability to dual record where you can record to one card while simultaneously recording to another just to have that backup just in case a card, you know, just fails on you. It happens and hopefully that is not the next thing to happen to me, but it happens. My guess is with the camera's disposition and limitations as far as overheating is concerned, honestly, it just does seem like a missed opportunity for Canon, seeing as a lot of previous models and other brands have already accomplished this, and even Canon has accomplished this with their, you know, continuous recording, backup recording. The earlier modeled cinema cameras like the C100, the GH5, the list goes on and on of the ability to backup record is just, I'm, and for some of you, backup recording might not be that big of a deal, right? I mean, my pros certainly outweighed the cons of this camera, so it could do the same for you. It is just something that keeps me weary when thinking about utilizing this camera for the entirety of the wedding day, and something that you should also just understand as well that it does have limitations. It is unfortunate because for photography, you can backup record. So yeah, bonus points for photographers using the Canon R6. All right, number two obviously, the overheating issue. Now that I can finally touch on this point, seen as it has officially happened to me at a previous wedding, my main takeaway is if you're going to be using the Canon R6 as your main driver for wedding filmmaking, make sure you bring a backup solution for situations just like this. Just plan for, what is it, Murphy's Law. You know, if anything can go wrong, it will. So I was in the middle of shooting the first dance and my previous clip had run a little bit longer than I expected. And also I just wasn't paying attention to the length of what I was recording. And I went above the 15 minute threshold and then yeah, first dance was happening and I also wasn't thinking, but um, yeah, I just kept filming and the little red temperature bar at the top right came on and I had a mini panic attack. So that was fun. I didn't let it get to the point of turning off completely because my paranoid self was just like, nope, not taking any chances went and grabbed my GH5 and just finished out the dancing sequence. I was able to save my butt because I had the GH5, I had my second shooter also recording, so I was covered in, you know, the situation that my Canon was just unusable. The overheating deal with the Canon R6, it's, it's a bummer, you know, because it turns the Canon R6 into a B or C cam. It just isn't considered a professional choice for wedding filmmakers. Will that stop me from using this camera on a wedding day? Probably not. I love Canon and the other positive features that come along with this camera, so that still just leaves it up for debate on whether or not it is just gonna be the right choice for you in your business. Number three is going to be C-Log versus the standard picture profile. I've always been a fan of C-Log and Log picture profiles because I enjoy 
the color grading process and getting the most out of my camera's potential. But after a few weddings and several hours of proxy files later, I'm gonna go with standard picture profile from now on. Primarily because right out of the box with standard, you are getting a really nice looking image. The colors look great. The contrast is a little dialed back. So I just, I still have some customized settings with this picture profile, but honestly, it just is what I'm using right now. Right out of the box, I'm doing minimal color correction in post. And honestly, it just speeds up my workflow. Opposed to utilizing C-Log for every single wedding, having to create proxy files and really have to eat up so much more space in my drives. And honestly, I'm just going for simplicity. With C-Log, you are getting about 50% better compression because it is H.265 opposed from 264 with standard. So for me, I'm just gonna pick and choose on when I feel like I just, I need that extra push in quality. All right, number four is going to be the photo and video modes. Um, yeah, this one kind of sucks. This one has been more of an annoyance, um, but it can be forgivable, seeing as I'm not utilizing it at every single wedding that I work at. If you are a photo and video shooter on a wedding day and you need a camera that goes from quickly taking some stills to pushing record and capturing some video with the same settings, unfortunately, that is just not the case with this camera. Instead, if you are in photo mode and you push record, the camera goes into full auto mode. So you don't have control of any of your critical settings like shutter speed, f-stop, ISO, it's all auto, which in a professional setting is not really what you're looking for. You wanna be able to have that customization. You wanna be able to dial in the look that you're going for. And so really your shutter speed and your ISO could be floating wherever. You just, you don't really know. And so that is kind of a bummer. If you are, you know, a photo and video shooter for weddings, which if you are and you do this like with ease, I salute you because Damn. Really the only workaround to this, you know, issue is to constantly switch from photo to video mode. But however, that does cost you time, which on a wedding day is just not something you have a lot of, especially like I mentioned, if you are a photo and video shooter on a wedding and you're capturing the bride walking down the aisle and you need to quickly switch between capturing a couple stills and then capturing video, it's just not a good solution for that. But again, this is also for people who are looking for that specific setting so it may not necessarily apply to you if you are solely video or solely photography. So really to conclude my thoughts, honestly, I still love the Canon R6. I, I probably always will, you know, being that I appreciate Canon, I appreciate, you know, the output that you're able to achieve with this camera. The fact that it's a hybrid photo and video model, the autofocus is good, the color is good. Yes, there is limitations. Yes, there are a lot of cons but that is also with every camera that you consider for your business. So really the main takeaway from this video is, you know, if you are considering the Canon R6, I would recommend this camera as a B or C cam. Would I recommend it as your main driver? You know, this is the only camera you have in your bag. You don't have any other backups then absolutely not. This camera would not be considered a professional choice in my opinion. Now, if you are writing photography, this camera is amazing. Super reliable, crazy fast with autofocus, great looking images, you have backup recording. This camera is top tier and I would highly recommend that for you. Again, full disclosure, my opinion is not meant to be your deciding factor. It's just something that I like to offer and give you my real world experience using this camera. So yeah, thank you for what you will. Thank you guys so much again for watching this video. If you found this video helpful or valuable in some way, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, it would mean so much. And if you're new to the channel, I produce videos just like this every single month, whether that be camera reviews, tips and tricks, how to's and wedding films. So you don't want to miss that. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And until next time, keep creating and telling beautiful stories. Peace. We're